Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Josh Hodges. I'm the host of Online with an Architect. Uh, very excited to have Carl Childs, the VCDX Program Manager, with us today. Welcome, Carl. Thank you, Josh. Glad to be here. Thanks for asking me. Oh, my pleasure. You know, VCDX is a, is a hot topic and uh, something I'm very passionate about. So having you on is, is fantastic. Um, so maybe just uh, for people who don't know you, can you just give us a quick introduction about yourself? Sure. So um, I uh, live in Utah, US. <laughs> um, I've been living, you know, I've stayed here. It's kind of a little bit of a hotbed for certification programs for IT. So um, just kind of uh, have built my career here and I've been here, but um, it took over the VMware certification program in 2015, I believe it was. So about eight years ago, getting closer to nine years. And uh, I managed, I currently managed the entire program. So I have not just the VCDX program, but also the other certifications. Uh, I've done that for a while, the certification development team and the framework. So, um, so worked for VMware for about nine years, really owned the whole program for about eight, I guess, eight and a half, eight. But when I first came on, uh, my first job, I guess, the first responsibility I had was VCDX. So, so from day one, uh, I've been working with VCDX, um, took it on after the program was, of course, already implemented and established, um, brought it on, really just adopted the same practices and procedures and policies that were in existence at that time that were built up, but have just really since then looked for ways to, um, to adapt the program, to continue to grow our pool um, not only our pool of candidates, but our pool of panelists um, mm -hmm. built the mentor, built up, continue to build up the mentor program with additional um, mentors and, uh, and and workshops and things like that to really support the program. But um, but since I've uh, um, so so and that's what I've done pretty much since I've, I've been here as long as as well as building up the uh, the other certifications and introducing a couple new ones and just maintaining that program mm -hmm. as we go. Yeah, fantastic. Do you want to actually give us a quick overview for, for those who are looking at VMware education, what sort of levels are involved and, and what sort of, yeah, what, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, so for those that may not be as familiar with VCDX, it is the the top level, the highest level of certification that VMware offers. Um, it's as tough of a certification as you can find in about any other company uh, to get through. It's a, it's a tough certification. It really requires um, not only just passing the requirements um, but preparing for the requirements is a lot of work and it takes a lot of experience and a lot of know-how so so being the the top level certification it does require submitting um, a full design on uh, we have different scopes different tracks um, so depending on your specific track that you want but a full design based on that that track so it could be a full data center virtualized data center design it could be a full network design um, and by full i mean end to end <laughs> scope it includes you know everything from the implementation uh, and an operations into the fully logical and uh, physical design and just really showing all that that full extent of it so you yet so that's where that prep so that takes a lot of time that's before you even um, submit right and apply. I may people may be doing that, and I'm not. I'm not aware of it, right? Because it takes so much work and, and that prep to do. Um, and uh, and I forgot to mention, even before you do that, to even apply for VCDX, you have to have the prerequisite certifications as well. So there's there's two additional layers, which includes three full certifications that you have to pass as well. So so a lot of work, right, to even get up to the point of submitting. But once you have achieved those certifications, completed your design. You submit it, and we have our panelists, uh, so a pool of uh, professionals that have already earned the VCDX and that are um, expert in that track that you choose. They look at your design. Um, they go through it with their score and rubric, so there's certain elements that it has to meet, uh, and they basically score it. If you pass that phase, then you are invited to come defend that design. And so defending that design requires you to be in front of a panelist of three. So these are, again, your your peers, but those that have passed the VCDX uh, already. Uh, and again, they're expert in that and have had training on how to be a panelist. Um, but you have to defend your design um, in front of them. They'll ask you questions. They'll try to um, determine you know, how expert you are in those specific elements uh, of passing so that you're meeting the objectives that we have for VCDX. And, uh, and and you, you defend that for about 75 minutes, and then you move to a phase, you get a little break, but you also move to a phase where you have to, on your feet, start to put, get, put together a design. So these panelists are now going to start to 
throw you a scenario and start to ask you questions as if they were a customer as an example. And you have to, and you're in front of this customer and you've got to meet their requirements and start building this design and, and, and you do that for a little bit. So, so it's intense, it's, it's tough and it's intense, which is why we call it, you know, the highest level and it, and it is um, the highest level and it's as hard as you, a certification as you get anywhere else. Um, which means that those that are earning it, as you know, Josh, so Josh is one of the VCDX, um, it's it's the highest caliber of professionals that we have that pass this because it not only requires technical expertise, but it requires some um, some engagement. So you have to be able to present yourself. You have to be able to speak as if you were talking to a customer. You have to be able to think logically. You have to think abstract when you think about a design, um, not only as you're preparing your design to submit, but also just on demand during that during that defense as well. And so. Um, so those that are earning that have really shown their metal. They've really shown their experience. They've really shown their capability and expertise. And so it really means something to be a VCDX. Um, it requires quite a bit uh, to get through it. So, so there you go. Those are the, if you're not familiar with it, there you go. That's, that's kind of the layout of what you have to go through uh, to, you know, to earn this, this certification. Yeah. I mean, one of the things sure. we'll, we'll go through the value of the certification, you know, in depth more, but one of the things I really like is anyone who's done VCDX or even attempted it and got to the panel, even if they didn't necessarily pass the panel, you know, that they've, they've got some commitment. Um, yeah. They've given themselves all that time and effort to get to the point where they've submitted a design. And even to me, I almost feel like getting the design accepted is almost a certification in itself. Yeah. Because that's a pretty high bar to meet. So yeah. if someone can produce documentation to a standard which gets them an invite to defend at the panel, I feel like that's a great achievement in itself. Yeah. Uh, and that's a different skill set as well to what you're doing in the panel, which, like you say, is consulting. It's proving your expertise. The documentation set is you know, obviously complementary to that, but it's also a separate skill. There's a lot of really good architects who can't do documentation who would never pass VCDX. So it really shows a, a very broad uh, and deep skill set. Um, so yeah, I, it does. And, and that's a great point about the, you know, the design when you submit because you really, in fact, those that, are, that tend to be successful at the defense are those that really know their design, meaning that they have not just put in the work to create this thing, but they understand every aspect of it, right? They really understand these their network design, right? And what it's required. And they really understand how to design something that meets a customer requirement. Um, they understand how to put something together that is within a constraint that they may have, right? And so they really know it very well end to end. And that's not easy, you know? And that, so that takes a lot of work, right? So it is a, it is a, it, it is a great qualification just to even have that, that design um, that passed. Yeah. Accepted to move on to the yeah. Absolutely. And I think, you know, as architects, we're not obviously experts in every single facet of, you know, IT, right? Exactly. <laughs> no, but to your point, you need to be across the entire design. And certainly my design, you know, obviously it had networking, it had storage, it had the virtualization layer, it had application layer, it had security and all this stuff. You know, I had to make sure that, you know, the teams that worked on that quite a large project uh, with me, although I was the lead architect, you know, I had to make sure that I was very well across all those areas. Yeah. Uh, and that effectively just made me better because I had to make sure that, oh, what, what's this panel going to ask me? You know, yeah. so I just went to the nth degree to try and make sure that I, I knew as much as I could. Yeah. Um, I think just that process as well, knowing that you're going to be quizzed on something produces a better design. Certainly it was, it was the best design I'd done up to that point. Um, and then, you know, when you go and defend it, if you've prepared well to that level, and for me, I simply just write very detailed design decisions out and I sit with the, the subject matter experts and I make sure they're really well justified and we've talked about the alternatives and constraints and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I got in front of the panel, I, it certainly wasn't easy by any stretch, don't get me wrong, but because I'd gone through that process and I documented everything and I'd actually experienced the process of making all those decisions with the SMEs, I found answering some of the questions to be quite natural because it was an experience that I'd just gone through. Like I defended maybe a few months after I did the design. So it was very fresh in my mind um, and everything was well documented. So reading through my design actually reminded me of some of those conversations and experiences during the design implementation phases. 
Um, so I guess that's a quick tip for anyone doing VCDX. <laughs> Choose a design you've done recently. Make sure you've documented all your decisions really well because it certainly made my defense, you know, much more enjoyable. Um, yeah. I think Good. You know, there was a few things I forgot on the day, but uh, but overall, I, I found that it was just me presenting something I designed to the panel. Sure, you know. yeah. And yeah, I mean, one thing I've said to some people I've mentored is, you're, you should be the world's leading expert in your design. So actually, that the panelists who are very intelligent people are at a disadvantage if you want to think about it like that. Like they haven't spent all the time creating your design, implementing it, whatever. So you're actually the expert in your specific design. So you really should be able to answer any of those questions. And more importantly, you should be able to preempt what you're going to be asked if you think about it because you know the strengths and the weaknesses in your design because you did it. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like that's why it's so valuable is, is if you put yourself in the position of the panelist, you can work out what they're going to ask you. And at the same time, you might go, oh, wow, I didn't think of that. So I'm going to make my design better or I'm going to plug that hole that was there or I'm going to mitigate that risk. So yeah. I think the whole journey is is really valuable. And, and that's what I was going to ask you is in your experience, like nine years running VMware Education and, and the VCDX program, what have you seen out of the people who have gone through the program? Yeah, you know, that's... I, I love how you said that and, and phrased that because that really is a common response that I get when I ask VCDXs and even those that are still going through that process. And I ask them what, um, you know, what is the thing, what do they get out of it? And that is part of a very common response is that just the fact that you have to go through that work, you know, they grow so much from that. You know, getting the certification means a lot. But going through that exercise of what you just kind of laid out, you know, your own experience and going through that learning and having to discipline yourself and and also become so expert in your design, the world's leading expert in your design, you know, just going through that process itself is one of, if not the most valuable thing that you get out of this program, because that's what really enables you then to act at and to perform at a higher level to perform at whatever that next career jump may be for you, you know, or you're looking at. And that's really what um, is, is truly valuable. And so I've asked that, you know, over the years uh, at conferences and we've had panels of VCDXs and things like that. And I've asked that question and that's, that is always one of the answers that comes out uh, when I ask that. So, um, so it's nice to hear that you had the same, you know, um, return, you know, on your on your investment time, and that that really helped in a lot of the ways that to to, to move you forward, and um, so that's great, and, and and even your advice on on knowing that design and, and treating it, I, I kind of like that. Actually, I hadn't heard that before. That perspective of putting the panel at a disadvantage because you know so much more than they do, right? It's your design that you're presenting. Um, I, I think that's great advice. I, I kind of like that, and that's really what putting the effort in to become that expert, even though it's something you've created or as part of a team is created, right? But you really know every aspect of that. Um, by putting that effort in, that's where that growth and expertise and, and the result really comes from. And so it should be, I mean, that that's actually the, the goal would be, I would think of every candidate they come in is how you, you kind of, you, your experience come in as that you have a comfort level because you know what you got. Mm -hmm. I don't come in thinking, oh, I hope I pass. I hope I know enough. I hope, you know, come in really knowing. If you come in with that um, that comfort level that you really know your design and that you can ask answer about every question that comes at you based on that design, um, you have a very, very high chance of succeeding, you know, mm -hmm. versus not quite sure, not quite knowing if someone else designed the networking aspect of it and you've just happened to read through it and then that's about it, right? Don't do that. <laughs> really know that piece of it, even if you didn't design it. Um, yeah, so you're from an expert level, yeah. And you grow from that, right? You learn from that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I certainly learn a lot doing doing my design and different areas. Um, the design was on on NetApp storage, and I'd done a fair bit with NetApp prior to that. Um, but the the guy doing the architecture on the storage side, uh, he and I worked very closely. Uh, and mm -hmm. in fact, I worked closely with NetApp uh, as well, who got involved in the the project. Oh, cool. Um, so I learned a lot just going through that as well. Um, what I was going to say is, you know, when we present to a customer, you know, we might have option A and option B, or we might have a recommendation we want them to go with, but we don't want to just come out and, you know, say it. And what I found in my career is when you're doing a presentation, 
you just quite intentionally leave a little mistake in the presentation um, and people will pick up on it. They'll go, oh, what, what's going on there? <laughs> you know, you have a typo or something and I call it the honeypot, right? Yeah. It's honeypot because the bees come to the honey and, uh, you know, it, they ask you a question on that and you can go, oh, actually, I'm really glad you asked because because that's actually a typo. What we did was X, Y, and Z and, and you can really hone in on, uh, on what you want to talk to. Um, so I use that in my, my panel, actually. I had a few little honeypots in there because I wanted to be asked in certain areas because I felt like they had a lot of value and it would be able to demonstrate expertise. So I think, you know, that concept I'd done prior to VCDX just with customers. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why would I change? You know, it's testing my real world skills. This is one thing I love about VCDX is it's testing an actual real world skill. Yeah. It's, you know, multiple choice exams have some value. Um, but there's obviously some flaws in that, you know, but overall it's a good point to, yeah, there's limitations to a multiple choice question. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult to make them much better than what they are, but the moment you get in front of people and you have to consult like you do in the real world, the, the value I think shoots through the roof. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. This is a, it's a performance based exam. Mm. It means you, you have to perform it similar um, in a way with our VCAP deploy where you are in the actual environment, right? Aside from it, and you have to perform. That's a performance-based exam. You got to do the task that you would typically do on the job and you're actually doing it. And mm -hmm. we're able to observe it, you know, in that exam, the VCAP deploy, we're able to observe it, um, you know, electronically, I guess, right? The computer, right? We, it runs the script, right? It tests it. It sees what you're doing and it texts you on that. The VCDX is observed by humans and, and they, they're actually they're able to see and, and evaluate and judge. And that's interesting that you help guide them <laughs> down the path that you want to with these honey spots. But, yeah. um, but it's a performance-based exam. You have to do, and that's what happens on the job, is you have humans evaluating you as you're recommending something to a customer, and the customer may take you in a different direction. And, and, and we tell our, um, during this, you know, a certification is valid, is a value because it's consistent for every candidate that comes through. Mm -hmm. So our panelists aren't trying to direct you down some, you know, some trail, some, some rat hole that other candidates don't get, right? That, that's not what they're doing. Sometimes candidates feel like that <laughs> because they're being, maybe asked in an area where they're not as familiar, but, um, but that's not what they do. Every candidate actually gets the similar experience and, and really tested on the same objectives um, to evaluate. But, but that it's emulating what, just like you said, it's emulating what really happens in real life on the job. It is a true performance-based question. So when you pass, it means that you're passed because you're performing at the level that you would in the real world at a, as a successful architect would. And if you don't, you may still be performing at a very good level, right? But there was just enough for those points that you can improve on and continue to adapt. And, and that was the other thing too, uh, just you uh, thought as we talk about this process, you know, there's in, in this case, you know, the multiple choice exam, the VCP, VCAP, you, you hate to fail. It's like, ugh, you got to go in and you have to go through the same multiple choice and answer probably a lot of the same questions, you know, to get through it again, get enough points. And it's really frustrating. This one, as I talk to VCDXs that, that have failed it the first time and have had to come back and defend again, um, there's a lot of, they find value in that too. A lot of learning because it's, you know, for some, it's a little bit of a, of an ego check, meaning, you know, they thought they had it and they're good. You know, we know what we're talking about. I know everything about it. And okay, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Right. And so it's a little bit of ego check, which is good in a good way. Right. It's, it's, you're able to, okay, now I'm able to learn. Now I'm recognizing some of my limitations. Okay. Let me grow from there and be, and you become better at overall at what you do. Um, and just recognizing some of those elements where, oh my gosh, I didn't realize, you know, even if there wasn't an ego in there, but I didn't realize um, I didn't know that as well as I thought I did. These panels were asking me some very good questions. And wow, if I'm in front of a customer and they're asking me that and I didn't know how to answer it, um, you know, I, I might lose that, right? Or whatever it may be. And so I want to make sure I'm better at that. And so it's a huge, it, just that learning process. It's really an uplift in your skill, um, in your progression. You really advance um, your opportunities and your, your prospects by going through that, even if you fell and then you have to do it again. Uh, in fact, we have the average... Um, attempts at going through VCDS, it's actually, it's, it's actually just over two. Mm -hmm. So it's two point something, you know? So, so even failing twice is, is, 
is not a bad thing, you know, on this VCD act. So we don't want that. I actually hate it anytime someone fails. I want to see everyone, you know, pass first time. Yeah. But, but but um but you don't, you know, we're not I'm not gonna lower the bar just because I want someone to pass, right? You still have to meet the objectives, but um but it's a great, yeah, it's a great way to learn and, and to continue to grow. It's yeah, that, that really is just one of the greatest things that come out of this whole process. Mm. I've heard that exact story from from a couple of guests on the podcast that, you know, weren't successful the first time, mm. but they went through the second or third time and, and they passed and they felt like it was a great experience. They, you know, from that exam, like when you do multiple choice exam, you get a score, right? Pass, fail, whatever your score is, it's like, ugh, like you say, it's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or, you, or you get a lower score than what you thought you should get and you know, you're, you're annoyed. <laughs> but you don't really get any feedback. You, you don't really learn anything from yeah. multiple choice exams, in, in my opinion, right? You might yeah. go, oh, I'm not really you, sure. You know which objectives you miss some on, but yeah. Yeah, you you've got to study, but yeah. Yeah, but when it's in front of the panel, like you say, they ask you really intelligent leading questions uh, that a customer might ask you or a customer's architect even. And you go, oh, wow, actually, that's a really good point. And your mind can really spiral into like a rabbit hole and, you know, you know that there's a gap. So, yeah, yeah I think it's a great way to set your own baseline, work out where it is. And you know, when someone asks you a question, whether you know it or not, you know <laughs> how confident you are and you know if you're sort of bullshitting like because yeah. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you get away with that on a panel. So, you know, I think it's important to, yeah, understand that gap and it's an opportunity to fill it. And yeah. when you come back, maybe the second time you go, Oh, wow, I really know this now. Like I know there was a gap here in, in storage or in whatever. Um, but if you come back the second time and you know, you've plugged that your confidence level should also be higher. Yeah. Um, so it, it almost is sort of almost like the design course. I remember doing back in the day um, when the vSphere design course, I think first came out version four, I think it was. Okay. Um, and I remember doing that course thinking this is the best course I've ever done because it was in a room on a whiteboard with an instructor and a group of people. And it was sort of like a VCDX boot camp in a way. Um, so yeah, I found it, uh, it really good. Can you give us just a quick summary of your, your thoughts on the value of, of VCDX and that journey? Yeah. And just that journey. And I love that word journey too, because um, yeah, it really is. It's, it's, it's longer as you kind of talked a little bit about it. it's longer than just that one defense but it's not only the preparation but the prerequisite certification so even though we're talking comparing a little bit of the multiple choice exams and and they are a very good assessment of certain skills but there are some limitations on there um with those you know they don't there's not an observably behavior that you or behavior that you can observe with those right you're just answering the questions um and so as you go through those prerequisite certifications that journey so you start out with that you're proving some of your technical knowledge then you prove some of your technical capabilities through the lab exam, the performance-based exam there. And you got to bring that all together with, um, with preparing and really, as you put together this design, really growing and understanding where you have your own limitations and understanding and learning more about that and this full design, being able to really defend that design. You know every bit in and out of every aspect of that, just in case you might get asked a question on it. You want to make sure that you're ready for that that whole journey and just going through all that work and process. And it sounds like, and it is a lot of work, but you learn and you grow and you become so much more capable and you're really upskilling. You're finding areas that um, even in your own preparation that you may recognize you didn't know as well as you thought you did. So you learn more and you grow and you talk to others and you talk to your peers and you learn more about that. Right. And you observe others and whatever it may be. And you practice on it. You get your own lab, right. And you're working on some things. And, um, and so you're growing and you're learning that. And then even if it, we've talked about not passing the first time, even if you fail at that VCDX level that first time, recognizing where those limitations are and through the panelist questions, you remember when you come out of that, where the panelists were, were asking you questions. And a lot of them, I didn't mention this either. We, we share this a lot in our workshop. Those panelists, candidates come out of there and like, those guys would not stop asking me questions about networking. You know, this wasn't just a networking design. You know, why you wouldn't ask questions on the other? And the reason why is because they recognized they needed more to see more to score you higher. That's where they wanted to see you. They saw a gap there. And it wasn't that they were focusing on your weakness. They were just trying to give you an opportunity to score higher because mm -hmm. every panel, they want you to pass. Um, and that's why. But at the same time, you also, it's a great way to evaluate and say, ah, 
they were asking me questions there because I wasn't explaining it well enough. It wasn't fleshed out in my design. So I had to talk through it more. Right. Um, and, and so you can evaluate yourself and again, grow from that. And so that that whole journey, regardless of what happens, whether you do pass the first time, you don't pass, whether you submit a design and it's kicked back because it doesn't it's missing some pieces, you know, or whether it's accepted right. You know, the first time it's whatever that happens, whatever your journey is along that you learn from every single one of those steps, every mm -hmm. single one in that journey. Um, you're gaining insight and you're gaining um, awareness of where you have some of those, those, you know, limited knowledge, maybe more limited knowledge. And so an expertise. And, and so, and that's the advice is take it that way, right? Don't get offended or don't feel like it's jaded or that we're swaying because we like so-and-so better than we like you, right? Because that's not, that's not the case. It is built. So it's objectively scored. There is, even though it's a human element to it, there is. And so there's a little bit of subjectivity too, as, as the panelists interpret what you're, what you're stating and going through, it is scored objectively. Everyone scored the same. And so, so take it as, as that, right. And really learn from it and grow. And so that journey then becomes, you know, when you look back and you've kind of, we're talking to this a little bit, Josh, right. When you look back at that and you realize, Oh man, where I was here when I started and now I'm here, mm -hmm. you know, awesome. You know, thank you. I've, I've learned that was hard, but I'm better for it. Right. I, I'm much, I'm much more better for it. Yeah, I think most things in life that are difficult end up being valuable. Yeah, I know. It's a life lesson, right? Not just a VCDX thing, but <laughs> right. For sure. And actually, to your point about, you know, if the panel's asking you a bunch of questions, I had a, a similar experience. I was running some boot camps for, you know, architecture and how to design and whatever. And, you know, one of the candidates I thought was actually really good. He was a really excellent guy. And if he's listening, he probably knows who I'm talking about, actually, because we had a good chat <laughs> after the, the class. But... Um, it, he was performing so well in the boot camp. I thought this person is a fantastic example for the rest of the group. I'm going to, you know, go through the 101, the 201, 301, and even 401 level questions. Okay. To see how he goes, and I'm confident he's going to get 301 or above anyway. So I think it'll be a great example. So I start down that process of asking some questions. He answers very well, um, and then 201, he answers very well. 301, maybe a couple of little gaps, but answers very well. And then I jumped to 401 just to see where the, the depth is at. Um, and he kind of got a bit upset. He's like, oh, you know, you're trying to make me look bad. You're trying to stump the chump or whatever they call it. Yeah. That, that's not the intention at all, actually. I wanted to use you as an example, and you were a great example to the rest of the class um, of showing knowledge at different layers. And the fact that you couldn't get to 401, you're already in the top 1%. Like, if you can get to 301, you're in the top 1% already. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. yeah, that's really good. Um, like one thing you mentioned in the VCDX town hall, which I'm sure you won't mind me bringing up, um, was the ratio of double V caps to VCDX. Can mm -hmm. you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, there. Um, yeah, so um, meaning like the percentage is that what you mean? The percentage of V caps and bring that up, and yeah. and yeah, and there's also a percentage of um, of the double V caps that mm. that um, that earn the double V caps out of our VCP. Mm. candidates as well um and it shrinks right it's a smaller it's kind of a pyramid shape mm. uh which is standard for any certification program your lower levels you have more people and then every level up you know right it, it limits it um so we have about 300 vcdx's today um double v caps you know that's probably that's well that is less than probably five percent ten well yeah right around there less five percent um Actually, it is. It's, it's less than five percent of our double V caps, mm -hmm. uh, and our V cap, you know, quite a bit less than that. And so, um, so it's it's a stark contrast, right? That limit. Mm -hmm. But it, it, I think, it goes to show for a couple things: is those that go through it, it's intimidating for one. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, and and maybe it's not a career path for a lot of the double V caps either, right? And so it's not necessarily something that they're they're not going down that architect career path as much. Mm -hmm. um, that could be some of it. Some of it is this intimidating. It's like, gosh, you know, I, I don't know if I'm up for it, you know, which is okay. Right. I, I've got other priorities, right. In, in my life or whatever. And because it takes a lot of time and investment um, to make it. So it could be just as intimidating to do it. Those that do go through it, not everyone makes it. Hmm. Not everyone, you know, as we talked about, or they're still in the process. And, you know, there's been some VCDXs that have taken three or four years to get through it just because of, of they weren't able to, and, and not, three or four years of full time, right? <laughs> Always expend, but, but they're taking that time as they're learning more and they recognize, oh, wow, maybe I'm not quite ready after that first attempt. I'm going to get some experience under my belt you know, or I'm going to just you know work on this design as I can. And so it's a longer process that way. 
Um, so there's a lot in process. And so not everyone makes it through. But then for those that make it through, I mentioned before that as much as I'd like to see every VCDX pass the first time, as much as I'd like to see that number grow, mm. we don't want to lower the bar of what it takes to become a VCDX. Because as soon as we do that, then the VCDX starts to be less than it is. And we don't want to do that. Not only do we want to discount what everyone else went through already to earn the VCDX, but we want to maintain the level of what that really means. And so, so it becomes really hard. So it does really restrict the number of people that can get it. Um, but it really exemplifies those that do earn it. It really shows at what level they're operating. You mentioned the 301 to 401, and that's already the 1%, right? VCDX, you know, the fact that it's under 5% or even lower than that of these double V caps isn't necessarily a negative connotation. It's kind of, a, for those that have earned it, it's a very positive connotation. You are, you're the elite of the elite, right? You really know what you're talking about. And, show, and you are a great example that others are going to try to achieve and, and try to get and get to on there. And so, so we're doing things for the program. We want to do things. And we talked at the town hall that you mentioned, we talked about ways that we could potentially help grow awareness of the program to grow some of the benefits that you get, you know, as you earn a VCDX, but, um, and so do things like that. So we can help grow the program. We want the numbers to grow. Um, but for those that get it as it currently exists today, it, it, it really says something about those that have earned it and continue to, um, to execute at that level and to really operate at that level um, within their careers. And, and, and it's interesting, we mentioned the life lesson thing, right? Mm -hmm. I actually have heard some VCDXs that said, that they, they told me that, you know what? In fact, one, <laughs> so if, if he's listening, you may remember this, there's one that we had a story where he took, he had a, a solution, it's a, him and his wife were trying to figure out an answer to a, a problem. And I can't remember exact problem, but it was something um, something they were trying to solve right within their home life, right? That they were trying to figure out with their, um, whatever it was, I can't remember what it was, but so, and he said, he goes, you know what, I'm going to apply this same methodology that I used to the VCX to this problem. And he says it actually worked. It, it helped them figure out what the, you know, what their resolution would be as they thought through the whole thing and apply it all of the different layers and you know, all this to this problem. And it wasn't a technical problem, right? But it was that uh, reply applying this. And so, I've done it many times, so it definitely works. Yeah, yeah, this is this just, I love that. I thought that was so awesome to apply in this. And so, um, and so it really means, you know, you can execute and perform at this level consistently, you know, in, in other areas, not just your career, but of course that's where it's, it's primarily based at. But, um, and so, so that, that number, you know, that, that it is a restriction we want to grow up, but at the same time, Boy, if you were in your VCDX, that really means something. And that's the awareness that we're trying to grow. You know, we, I know we want to talk a little bit about the future of the program. And that's really where it's at is it's, it's we're not really changing what the VCDX is. We might change some of the scope. So we might change the tracks, might change and evolve, right, as, the, as technology changes and as VMware strategy changes and whatever um, it may be. So some of that may change. Um, but we don't, we're not changing what it takes. We're not changing what it means. We're not lowering that bar, that objective measurement. We're keeping our scoring rubric the same. All of that maintains. Um, we just want to evolve and change the ways that we take this to market, the ways that we create awareness around it, mm -hmm. the ways that we support our VCDXs, those that are in process and those that are um, that have already earned it, right? Because the, the interesting thing too is, and I've gotten this here and there, is VCDXs will come to me and say, okay, hey, now what's next? <laughs> now what can I do? You know, and so so maybe there's a point in time where we start to add on something else. I don't know what that would be, but um, uh, other things too. And so that's really where the evolution of this program is. We're not we don't want to change what it is, but we want to change how we take it. You know how we're how we're how we're yeah really going to market with the program. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I think I think it's consistent with uh, BCDXs uh, who I've met probably ninety percent of the three hundred. Um, face to face, they all talk about continuous learning and VCDX almost being the beginning. And if you think about That's it, right. if VCDX is so hard to get, how can it be the beginning? But certainly from my perspective, it gave me all the tools to become much better. Yeah. So I think the bar for VCDX is incredibly high already, but it also gives you the tools to get better than that. So, yeah. and I think that's where the experience you're getting from VCDX is asking for what's next is they just want to continue learning. So. I think that's one of the values in the program as well is once you go through that journey, you kind of want more, you know, your appetite is, is never satiated. You know, you want to <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so yeah, certainly me and my team at end to end, we're the same. We just want to keep learning. And I literally am doing a, a VMware education course at the moment just to, you know, make sure my knowledge is right. up and stuff. So, you know, it's, uh, it is yeah. really just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And I love that. And, and really when we're talking about continued education and there's everything things that we're doing as a program across all the certifications that we want to start to enable that and recognize that, that type of thing. So, so maybe there will be a more formal way of what the what's next path for VCDX is, but, but that, um, that type of, um, I mean, I guess you can call it a personality trait, but really that sort of outlook, you mm. know, is what you really need to, to be a successful VCDX at the same time, you know, even in your journey up there is always learning and always wanting to learn and always grow and staying up with the latest and right. That desire don't ever just take things, you know, it's not a one and done by any means. It's a, it, it really is a continual. Yeah. yeah. And actually a, a shout out to uh, Chris Mutchler, who's obviously running a lot of these boot camps um, for you and with you. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about some of those boot camps and what they're aiming to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. So there really are, um, yeah, our VCDX workshops, we deliver them both remotely. Um, so we can try to capture all those that can't attend in person. And then we run um, occasional. We used to run them fairly frequently in um, association with VMUDs. And we're hoping to get back into that. You know, of course, we're still maybe we're a little bit of a slower response to get back on, on our fee after COVID, but um, with a lot of that's happening around there, um, but we're still able to deliver them here and there. There's one happening in Singapore here next week. Um, VCDX workshop. We just ran one at Explore event in Vegas that you were there for. Um, and, uh, uh, and so we run them face to face um, here and there. But this workshop is really targeted at VCDX candidates. And it really doesn't matter where you're at in the in the in that process. You could maybe not have earned any certification yet, or you could be currently working on your design to submit for VCDX. We've had that that span within these workshops and, and they all get value from it because the workshop we do go through some of the talking about with the program and, and sort of the logistics around it and you know really what um, what you was required and, and we go through that and a lot of and so those that are maybe just starting out or are curious about it will learn from that um, and even those that are creating designs sometimes are like oh I didn't know that <laughs> I better you know make sure I have that in place or whatever so we go through the logistics of that and we talk about a little bit of your approach to VCDX um, so what it really what are some of the um, your, the attributes that you need to be a successful VCDX candidate? So we talk about that a little bit and um, and and not that there's only one type of person that can get it either. Right. But we do talk about some of those characteristics that tend to make successful um, VCDXs. And then and then we talk about, OK, now let's look at the content. So as you're building a design, what is the best way, way to approach that design? What's the best way? What are the elements you need within that design? That's some of the, the objectives, but also based on that objectives, what, how can you best, based on your knowledge, what is the best type of design that you should be building? Mm -hmm. um, and so we go through a lot of, of, of help with these, for these candidates that are attending the workshop to, to really create the best design that they can. So we, we spend a lot of time on that. And then we even move to the defense. We describe what it is, kind of how I did at the beginning of the podcast. So we talk about logistics again and the experience there. But um, but then we practice a little bit. Mm -hmm. and so we start to, you know, just introduce a little bit of, OK, this is what it's going to be like. And Chris, as an example, Chris Munchler, you know, he'll act. He'll kind of turn from that workshop presenter to, OK, now I'm your panelist. Mm -hmm. You know, ask me some questions um, or I'm going to start presenting you a scenario. Start asking questions. Start showing me how you would think through that. You know, if you were a candidate and the point where you're put on the spot. Let's see how you do, you know, kind of similar to the situation to that experience that you shared with that candidate with, mm -hmm. with your um, with your student. And so um, so it has all those elements and it's typically about a three to four hour workshop. Mm -hmm. So so it goes pretty quick, but at least it, it starts to introduce and starts to give you a little bit of a feel for what the whole thing is and what it entails and experience. And the great thing that I like about these is is we often have more than one. It's not just Chris or the presenter. You know, we usually have more than one VCDX that's there whether they're co-presenting or just in the room. Um, and so they can give their advice. They can share their own experiences. And so um, VCDX candidates, those that are in the workshop, get to hear from those that have already gone through it, as well as potentially start to create a network and start to, you know, meet VCDXs. And, and we have other channels. We have the Slack channel and we have, um, uh, that, and that's really great. We have a LinkedIn kind of group. People start to reach out and they start to, find these others and VCXs are typically so good at sharing their experiences and giving their advice and helping these candidates out. And so, 
Um, so it starts to create that network. It's an opportunity to start building that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so these week- workshops are great. Yeah, we do them, like I said, we do them virtually about every other month. Uh, and then in person when we can, we're starting to starting to hopefully pick that up again a little bit more. Yeah, and I think it's great for anyone, even if you're not looking at going VCDX, it's just a great insight into what expert level architecture programs look like. Mm. So I think definitely, like you yeah. say, you don't even have to be a VCP to attend. So yeah. just jump in, have a look. You might go wow and be a bit overwhelmed or something, but you know, it's, it's a good starting point. You, yeah. you learn something. Um, you get to meet, like you say, meet some VCDXs or some other candidates. Um, and actually, that's something I wanted to, to touch on is, you know, working together, you know, in a study group, doing mock panels and, and things like that. Do you want to maybe talk to the value of, of teaming up on designs and, and yeah. mock panels and things like that? Yeah. So when we um, when you submit a design and, and you'll see if you have gone to the website and you'll read through some of our policies, you'll see. It is not required that you are the only one that is built and touched and designed, you know, made that design, right? You can do that within a team and a group. And we don't, we don't go so far as to necessarily recommend that on the website. But if you talk to each of us and to your point, right, we do recommend that. Like that's very wise, right? You want to learn from others. You want to take, um, cause everyone's not expert at every single thing, right? It, it, it's, it's, that's a process to get, to get up to that level. And so, um, take advantage of others' knowledge and expertise and even work on this design together. Or um, many, and you mentioned this as well, many candidates have taken designs that they've worked on for real customers and and adapted it and scrubbed out customer names and that kind of thing, right, to to make it so you're not giving anything um, away uh, that the customer wouldn't want you to. But use, you know, build on top of what other people know and, and learn from them, right, and so create that. And so do that not only working on a design, but also as you're working preparing, getting ready for, say you're, you know, you got your design and you're thinking through the defense stage, there's opportunities to join other um, candidates and other VCDXs in mock panels. You can pretend, and it doesn't even have to be other uh, VCDXs. I've heard of, of other people that have used their wives and their, or their spouses and their spouse's friends. And that was there. They had no idea what they were talking about, you know, technology wise, no clue but they could kind of see, you know, how good and how comfortable you are presenting. And it's just great practice. Right. And, and even ask questions that um, from a, from a presentation kind of style, well, what would you do if I did this? And, and, uh, um, and kind of try to stump them in a way, you know, it helps them really prepare um, for what the panel will be like. And so. Um, and that's a world scenario. You might have a customer who's not technical. So, yeah. so, you know, I think it's, it's really important to, to have that one one level person um, yeah. But also, yeah, non-technical, might be a business-minded person, might be an accountant who asks you, oh, how is yeah. this viable commercially? Like, could be yeah. anything like that is, is great practice for the real Those world. Those are great examples, yeah. And and even just stating, asking the question, um, you know, I did not understand what you just said, <laughs> right? Explain that to me in a better way. Mm. You know, even thinking, oh, because sometimes we do. We tend to just go off and assume that everyone knows what we're talking about and are thinking this way we do, and right? Because, because at that level especially, right? We're, you you're all are smart. And so sometimes we maybe even get ahead of, of others in the room. And so um, stepping back and and rephrasing and thinking about a clearer way to communicate it to a, a concept, right, is, is really, really good practice. And so, so yeah, so those, you know, take advantage of mock panels with pe- with other people. And so using the community to help you there. And then, um, and then just the community at large, the broader community, the VCDXs tend to be um, very supportive of others. They want to see others succeed. And, uh, and in general, they love to, um, to, to share advice and to share that help to, you know, to, for, so others can succeed and, and uh, also share their expertise. And so you'll find many that have done like you are with this podcast and others do blogs and mm-hmm. others have series and a lot of them are very active on social media and they share a lot of their expertise. Um, and, and there are others that are very willing. A lot of people are very willing to spend their time. Mm-hmm. You mentioned being a mentor to mentor those candidates, to help them. And, and being a mentor doesn't mean that you're guiding them and giving them what they need every step of the way, right? But you are helping to provide feedback and you're helping to provide motivation and encouragement and um, and some guidance. And oh, that's maybe not the direction you want to go And you know, this design, you're kind of, you know, you're over-rotating on this element, right? Maybe come back and, and that kind of guidance. And so um, the community is very, the VCDX community is very eager to help that way. And so there's a couple channels. LinkedIn is a great way, um, you know, hashtag VCDX. And you typically get um, a lot of people awareness on that one, the whole VCDX community. You also have that Slack channel specifically. We have people on there that, hey, I'm new to this. 
looking for, you know, some guidance and people will respond or anybody know anything in the, you know, Sydney region, right? They can help put together an in-person mock panel and mm. respond. And so the community at large is very, very supportive um, of this, which is, which is cool. And, and I actually, I talked a little bit about my history. I came out nine years ago. I was with HP before that. I did some work with Symantec. Um, no, Symantec. I did some work with um, Canada, um, MCI up in Canada, MCI mm. Bell. That's not right. Canada Bell. Can't remember the name now, but up in Canada, I did some more. I used to work at Novell. This community is by far the most engaged expert community that I have seen in, in all my, you know, in, in my past experiences. It's, it's incredible. It really, really is neat to see this type of, of yeah, close and supportive community. And, and certainly every VCDX I've ever reached out to or has reached out to me, we, we've ended up, you know, not necessarily being friends. Some of us are completely opposite sides of the world. In fact, most VCDX is the opposite <laughs> To me in, in Australia, but uh, you know we, we communicate quite a lot, and uh, yeah, very friendly, very open to like it explore, going out for dinners and, and catching up and sharing knowledge, and yeah, so it is a great community. So just from that perspective, I think if you get VCDX, your network automatically becomes you know this very small pool of experts who are more than likely willing to help you, you know, at the drop of a hat. Um, yeah, you know, certainly. You know, the first time I, I met a friend of mine, Michael Webster, was probably, you know, 15 years ago or something. I was asking him a question. I remember it was about SRM and I knew he'd done a lot on SRM. I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do this solution on SRM. I'm kind of here. What do you think? And he's like jumped on a call straight away, helped me out before I was VCX. I think he was already certified at that point. Um, and, you know, since then, we've become great friends and former colleagues and stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's certainly a good group of people. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. And you even see that uh, you mentioned your, your so one of your past podcasts you've done with John Rashid, mm. uh, VCX number one, mm. basically the first one helped to create the program, helped to really spin off the program and get it going. And and that guy, I see him, he'll email me. He'll still, you know, so many years later. Right. And he is still so engaged and wants to see and share and wants to see this program succeed and wants to reach out to others and other people. And it just, it almost stems from the origins of the program, which is pretty neat. You know, that that culture in a way was just right from the beginning uh, and has built this really, really neat community. So, yeah, absolutely. Cool. And yeah, John's yeah. come on the podcast, as you mentioned, and, and talked to the value of the program. And he, I was literally at Explore, you know, a few weeks back, obviously you were there as well. And we had people come up to John, obviously John's very well known. So they always yeah. come up to him and, I'm standing beside him, sort of looking up at him as well. And, uh, you know, VCDX number one. And they're asking, oh, talk to us about VCDX. And the passion that he speaks with is fantastic. So yeah. uh, he's definitely, if you want to consider VCDX, try and meet John in person at one of these events. He's a very friendly guy. Um, watch the earlier podcast. It was actually the first podcast I did. So, oh, okay. yeah, first podcast, VCDX nice. number one. So, uh, he just likes to be number one in everything, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, I'm very jealous of that number. That's very cool. But uh, yeah, so yeah, John's a, a great uh, evangelist for the program. And, and I think every VCDX is, is a great evangelist. In fact, I've, I've never heard a single VCDX say anything really bad about the program. Uh, it, it's always very, very positive. So despite it being a lot of work and, you know, potentially stress and, you know, maybe you fail, you get upset and you have to come back and defend again, but everyone's happy in the end. So definitely a worthwhile experience. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So look, hopefully, you know, I can help grow the program. Hopefully, you know, John and all the other VCDXs are, are going to continue to help you grow the program. So I know you'll, you'll reach out if you ever need anything and uh, you know, me and my team would be more than happy to help. But okay. uh, yeah, I just wanted to say a big thanks for, for coming on the podcast. And if there's anything you'd like to words of wisdom before we uh, wrap up. Um, oh boy. Put me on the spot for words of wisdom, huh? <laughs> I would, you know, I, I guess I would just say, and we've kind of already said it, but if, if there's anything that you get out of this, you know, one message maybe to take take back with you is that um, the journey is worth it. And I kind of like how you just, you sort of finished up with that anyway, is it's, and you said potentially stressful. It's not potentially, it will be stressful. <laughs> it will be, you know, really hard or frustrating and um, it is tough, right? But but everything that you learn, and this is a life lesson again that we take from this, right? Everything that you're going through this, it really does enable better prospects for you, right? If you're, if you're looking at furthering your career, you know, it will open up doors. It, it can open up doors. Um, 
whether you're looking just to become a better architect, right? It absolutely does that. It expands your right? it expands your capabilities, right? If you're just looking to um, sort of measure yourself, we have some VC techs that have done it just because they want to see if they could, mm. you know. So if you're looking at sort of that self measuring stick. It will do that for sure. You know, yeah, it will it will show you where you're weak and strong. What's yeah. that? That was actually my goal. Was I just wanted to test my level? Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm. There's no way in hell I'm going to pass this elite sort of <laughs> But I thought, whatever, I'll submit. Let's and see what uh, happens. Yeah. A friend of mine, James Worth, and I just decided, hey, let's have a go. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, obviously we, we got our best effort in, and we, and we both passed. So uh, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, regardless of the reason of why you're doing it, that that journey that you go through, that the work that you put in for it, you know, it all, it really is it, worth it. In some way, you're going to gain a benefit from that. And that benefit will be different than maybe, you know, someone else, right? You and James probably have different benefits from it, whatever it may be, or Michael and whoever. It, you get something a little bit different out of it, depending on your own journey and your own, you know, your own reason for doing it. But there will be something you get out of it. Um, I've had... Um, I won't say his name, but there's, we, we have one that's worked. He, he's been looking at this and, and tried it once and then kind of stepped back and he realized I need more experience before I go for it again. So he hasn't earned his VCDX yet, but the community knows him. He knows the community. I, I see him out there and he's very active and he's still giving, and he gives other people advice and help, you know, and with his own experience and his journey. And, and I love that because this guy is very capable. He's very smart. Um, and he's very good. He, and he's recognized. Oh, I just need a little bit more. You know, I'll get there. I, I'm getting there. And and the job that I'm looking for is to help me even get the VCDX. And uh, and so it, it it changes your perception a little bit about around um, the reason why you're doing things and where, where, where you want to take it, I guess. And so that it's going to be different from every single person. But there's benefit and value in just that journey. And so so I'd say so I, I know that's a repeat of what we said, but the word of wisdom based on that is is just keep going, just do it. It's going to get a point, again, this is a life lesson thing, but you get a point of frustration, you just want to stop. Just ask yourself, why are you stopping? What What is the reason? Is it just because it's hard and I don't want to do it? You know, that's not a valid reason. <laughs> get over that, you know, find out. Yeah, and push past that. Get back to it. So. Yeah, and just get back to it. You know, there could be valid reasons for sure. And, and like I mentioned, this one that, you know, he's recognized that he's just going to get more experience. And so, and they get back to it. But um, just yeah, keep going. It, it it's worth it at the end. Just just don't don't stop. Don't give up. It's okay to take a reprieve if you need it, but but don't stop. Yeah, yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Just, just pause just for a, a yeah. moment. break. Get a glass of water. Right. Get back into it. <laughs> That's right. Like one thing I, I forgot to ask yeah. Yeah, on my list of things, and I just skipped it, was why should customers or why should employers look for VCDXs and why should customers look for partners with VCDXs? Yeah. You know, this, that, the answer to that, it really ties into everything we've been talking about. Having someone, um, whether it's on staff or if you're looking for, um, you know, a provider, if you're looking for a, um, a, you know, a solution integrator, right? The systems integrator that you want to come in and, and, uh, and create something for you. If, having a VCDX on staff, someone that has gone through and looked at that broad of, an, of a design, every aspect of that, recognizes, recognizes how to operate within constraints, recognizes how to overcome those constraints, recognizes what really what brings value from a design um, into meeting a, an objective, a business objective that, that you have and tying all that together. That, I mean, that's worth its weight in gold, right? It, or diamonds or, or platinum, whatever your, you know, metal is of choice. It's, it really is um, having that perspective and that expertise on any project is, is huge. And it, it may be, you know, you have your network expert. So your VCDX may not be the ultimate networking expert, but you have a networking expert. That's really all that person kind of knows. And operates in there and you put those together and, you know, boom, right? It, it, it's so much better and so much more. You take that VCDX and you put them with your, your data center expert or your, your um, you know, cloud expert or whatever it may be, right? Your, your um, like I said, your SRM expert, whatever it may be, your storage expert. Um, and it's just, it just, boom, it, it, it just magnifies um, the, the um, success, I guess, of that project, you know, and the capability of that success and really put in place. And so whether it's from, Getting, like I said, an employer or a partner perspective, or um, a customer looking for someone to come in and and uh, and work on a project for them. It's whatever that may be. Having a VCDX that understands the big picture and how to apply that big broad picture and think through the very logical reasoning and all those different layers 
um, I think that design is just, it's, it's very, very well worth it. For you. And so there's huge value in that, um, very much value in that. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, and that's one thing we're trying to create awareness around too, is just exactly that. So I love that question. Um, that's really what we want people to recognize because it's, I mean, we have, we have testimony after testimonial from you and the whole community, right? They can speak to just that very thing of how valuable it is just coming in on those projects. Mm. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a perfect place to wrap up. The huge value of ECDX to, uh, to all involved. Um, so thanks again for coming on, Carl. And I look forward to helping you grow the VCDX program. And, uh, and whatever's next for VCDX, you can count me in. I'm, I'm awesome. Down. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's fun being with you, too. Fantastic. Thank you. Cheers.